my name is Gabe Zolna. This is the 11th of March, 2019. Rene left a rather interesting link along with a comment. The uh, link is Shobot.com Awareness in Action. You've heard me say more than once that Trump doesn't know how to pick people. Well, here's another example. The person who Trump has chosen to be in charge of Venezuela is a ruthless mass murderer. This was published on the 10th of March, 2009, by Theodore Schobat. The Trump administration appointed Elliot Abrams to be in charge of the U.S. policy in Venezuela. Looking at Abrams' history, and he has a rather dark history, you need to really take a look at this. It would not be adventuresome to say that Trump has appointed a war criminal and murderer. Elliot Abrams was chosen by the Reagan administration to be Assistant Secretary of State for Human Rights. He was also a major figure in the U.S. proxy war in El Salvador, where what he would support was nothing short of naking style slaughterhouse in which far-right death squads massacred around 40,000 people. A lot of this violence took place in El Salvador where the Reagan administration backed far-right commandos who were fighting Sandinistas in a 12-year long civil war that ended with 70,000 dead, tens of thousands of whom were civilians. The U.S. policy did not have just the backing of Abrams, but a number of other politicians, including U.N. Ambassador Gene Kilpatrick, President Ronald Reagan, Vice President Bush, that's George H.W. Bush, Jesse Helms, and Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North heads up the NRA. How insane is that? The far-right officers were led by intelligence officer Roberto de Abiusan, who was trained by the CIA Directed International Policy Academy in Washington, and who would become the most notorious face of the U.S.-backed death squads, which were a part of the alliance between the far-right reactionaries and El Salvador government. It was de Abuso who orchestrated the assassination and murder of Archbishop Oscar Romel in March of 1980, as well as massacres of civilians. Abrams denied the murder of the Archbishop was done by Abarusos. Anybody who thinks you're going to find a cable that says that Roberto de Abuso murdered the Archbishop is a fool, Abrams said at that time. But information cabled to Washington in 1980 reported that Major Roberto Rebuso was in charge of the meeting, conspiring for the murder of the Archbishop, and that the participants drew lots of tasks of killing the Archbishops. The winner was an ex-National Guardsman who said the source now lived in Coad de Lago. Another cable in Washington from 1980 spoke of a meeting chaired by Mayor Roberto de Abuso, during which the murder of Archbishop Romero was planned. During the meeting, some of the participants drew lots for the privilege of killing the Archbishop. In 1984, U.S. Ambassador Robert White testified before Congress there was sufficient evidence to convict de Abuso of planning and ordering Archbishop Romero's murder. In March of 2010, the then president of El Salvador, Maruco Funes, made a public apology before the family of Romero for his death, stating that he was a victim of illegal violence and that the murderers unfortunately acted with the protection, collaboration, or participation of state agents. In the end, Archbishop Romero was a martyr of U.S.-backed right-wing violence. The fact that Elliot Abrams tried to whitewash the conspiracy behind the murder of Romero reveals how truly evil this son of a belief is. Yet, it is the same son of the devil who Trump appointed to, in the words of Mike Pompeo, restore democracy in Venezuela. Are you sort of getting the picture here, huh? 
The U.S. Embassy in El Salvador revealed to Washington that there was a clear evidence to implicate Bayuso for murder, such as the Archbishop Romero, but the Reagan administration did not make a single move against El Salvador's government, nor did it take any steps, such as the cutting off of aid, to pressure the government to cease such devotism. The Abusos would go on television and declare as enemies, teachers, labor leaders, union organizers, and politicians, and within days of the mutilated body would be found. Yet the Reagan administration claimed that they could not determine who was responsible for such murders. But in 1982, most of the leaders of the death squads were known to Washington, as journalist Douglas Farrell reported in 1992. There's a lot more for you to read, folks. I'm going to attach the link. Don't you find it interesting that Reagan was the one that was so against drugs? He had the zero policy. Remember that? Hmm? Folks, what do you think they were bringing into this country? And they still do. You know why they want to get rid of the drug cartel? Because they're competition. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Please, read the entire article. Pass it along to your like-minded friends. Repost it in all your social media accounts. There's an old expression, the truth will set you free. Thanks for listening.